Good afternoon. Uh, I am Tony Dottino and the founder of the USA Memory Championship and the president of Dottino Consulting Group. And uh, over the last week, we've had uh, our Thanksgiving holiday here, and uh, I've read so many different articles, uh, newspaper, magazines, science reports, over the importance of gratitude and looking at life with the things that we should be grateful for. And as I heard them over and over again, and then listening to uh, Lou Holtz, who was on television and receiving a, a President's Award today, uh, he talked about life is always going to throw things at you. And one of the things he taught his players uh, when he was coaching at uh, Notre Dame and one of their all-time great coaches and making a huge difference in the lives of the players on his team is one of the things he's, he, he always taught his players where life is going to throw things at you, right? The problems are going to come at you. And what you've always got to do is maintain the right mental attitude to understand that we can work as a team and we can work with one another to figure out how to overcome the obstacles and the crises that we have in our lives and deal with them in a more positive and constructive manner as opposed to giving up and feeling that you become a victim of something that you have no control over. So as I'm putting those pieces together, it made me I think to go back to the first book I wrote, which was now about 20 years ago, it was called The Brain Smart Reader. I was thrilled at the time to see my name on the front cover of a book written by Tony Buzan and, and Richard Israel, dear colleagues of mine. But it made me go back and read some of the paragraphs that we wrote 20 years ago on the importance of understanding the synergy of our own thinking and how it impacts our mental health, uh, cognitive fitness, and the way we go about living our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I want to talk about, uh, just read a few of the paragraphs here and bring those back into the present day in terms of where I think we need to be more focused and we need to be more vigilant and more uh, in control over what's going on up in here, which then gives us as to what goes on up in terms of our actions. The brain has, has more than 10 trillion cells. So science today has just told us we've got a lot of brain cells. And each one of them makes up and has a sending branch and a receiving branch. So this is a quick biology lesson of our brain. When the axon sends a message, it can connect to 100,000 adjoining other cells. And each cell that is connected can connect with 100,000 cells. Now, what's the point of 100,000 to 100,000 with a trillion of these? Fast forward, use your math calculations, and you quickly come up with the fact that we have unlimited potential of what? Thinking. And what we need to do is run our brains with the formula of 1 plus 1 to a brain with 100,000 to 100,000 with trillions has infinite capacity to think within itself. We call that the synergy of our human thought the season of gratitude and the holidays that are coming up. And the article that I talked about yesterday was the amount of increasing deaths from overdosing because people are reaching that point in their lives where they're overdosing on meds and they're not using the synergy of their own ability. When you continue the unlimited biological, when, when you combine the con unlimited potential of the brain with the principles that you discover, with brain principles, you discover that you input into your brain the direction of your own thinking. This sounds so simple, but it's so profound. You get to control the direction of your own synergy and of your own thinking patterns, which ultimately generate your own life. And so here was Lou Holtz, a former coach of Notre Dame football, talking about how he led his players and how he was thrilled to get them to realize when a problem comes up in your life, you got to just stay with what's up in here to figure out how to deal with it. And, and when his team would face a crisis, he'd say, look, we're going to at least get <coughs> three things I know are going to happen this season that we, had, we aren't planning for. But when they come, let's just deal with them and do it together, controlling the synergy of your own thinking patterns. 
So you either have provided the resources to overcome obstacles that block your journey to success or into leading a prosperous life, or else the reasons why you can't do something. And so often people come up with, well, this isn't going to work, or I'm not going to try this because this will not. And I'm like, whoa, it drives me nuts when I hear people, I'm not going to try that tip, or I'm not going to try that new skill, or I'm not going to practice this new uh, hobby of mine because it's not going to work. And I say, whoa, those become the reasons why we can't do something, and we're using the synergy of this trillions and trillions of cells with this 100,000, 100,000 to figure out why not as opposed to how do we do it? How, how can we move it forward? So start by thinking about how you define your own success. What is it we're trying to accomplish right now as we go through our lives? And the first thing that I'm t talking to people about and, and had a really great lunchtime conversation with f some folks today is, so how do we logically go about the period of time we're facing right now where we see daily uptake and uh, increases in COVID uh, uh, cases. And how do we process that and distill the nuggets that we need to know in order to what, have a goal that I, I think is all to stay alive. And it's so sad to me when I was reading this yesterday that we have 20,000 people that are die in the state of Florida from drug overdoses. And I'm saying, isn't it sad that the synergy of people have led them to where they have to use drugs and or overdose themselves to the point where they're no longer here. So when I think of thinking about how we define success in today's environment, to me it's how do we stay alive? And that's what I call the big S. How do we stay alive and utilize that which we are given and that's what we naturally all possess. How do we generate the right gig of taking inputs into it and using it to generate the right thinking, which then will take us to the right actions. Remember, the brain is truth-seeking. So now, whoa, we, we talk about our brains are looking for truth. And boy, if that isn't a challenge we all face today, which is, as I say, who do you believe? And why do you believe them? Because it's who you believe and why you believe them that then goes and becomes an input of good in, it generates the synergy of what your thinking patterns are going to be. And by golly, if by chance your filtering system is taking data in or information in that isn't accurate or isn't really in the spirit of what you're trying to accomplish, boy, it can, with, with a brain that has infinite capacity, it can really mess you up. So how do we change that filter and how do we become open-minded enough to know what do we let into our thinking process because that's what generates the, 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 the spiral of either getting to greatness or getting into garbage. So good in can be greatness grows or garbage in and garbage grows. So how do we detect your, your brain? How do we begin to direct your brain to overcome barriers and limitations? The first thing is to closely examine, and I mean closely, really become unemotionally detached, detach yourself from what are the facts that we can solicit from different agencies and organizations, which I say, just give me the facts. And one of the challenges that I have today, especially with our media, is they're giving us too much of their opinions and they're not giving us enough of, give me the facts, and I'll process them, and I'll come up with my conclusions on how I generate my gig, and in what direction do I send it? Because I think we're being given too many opinions that then, what's the right word before I get into trouble too much here, uh, manufacture the facts that support it. So I remember studying that in an IBM consulting group, they say, hey, you have a hypothesis, but be careful. You don't just find the facts that base that back up your hypothesis. Go out and find the facts, and then maybe you want to create your hypothesis and then see if you can hold it and prove it in, in like scientific study. The information is the starting point for creating new ideas and acts as an investment in the development of our intellectual power, intellectual creativity, and people power. 
So here's what, what I was writing 20 years ago. So what does that have to do with gratitude? It's the way we process life's experiences that we're confronted with today that take us into good in and good will grow. And as you let your brain take you into that, you can become much more energized, much more enthusiastic, and much more of a I can do as opposed to a why not. And so as this week of, of Thanksgiving has come, and I've read and read about gratitude and the importance of recognizing the good things that are going on in our lives today, I just want what I call a fair fight. A fair fight in terms of, can I have a fair fight that if I can generate the right thinking and input the right accurate information that I can let my brain take me through some difficult times and know I've got a support network out there to, to help me with it and really get through our COVID-19 with having, without having to resort to harming ourselves and maybe not achieve the greatness that we're all able to do. At times, I, you know, I, I'm blessed that I have learned so much from one of the world's leading experts and Tony Buzan and having written two books with him. Uh, he's no longer with us or I'd pick him up and say, Tony, what would you do in some of the situations we have? And it was always fabulous conversations. But it's sad that he's not with us, but it's also sad that the principles that we wrote about 20 years ago are not more widely used because I think we'd have a much different world that we live in today. Now, before I sign off, I, I, God, I'm, it's always a pleasure. It's good afternoon to Solongo, and boy, I, she's got a couple of notes here. It's, uh, this is the principal. It turns out to be one of her favorites. I find Solongo to be one of those folks that have got her synergy in that right spot that really and, and generi um, generates the goodness in her life and the miracles that she can create within it. And she's just been a delight to have met her through my Live with Tony broadcast and through work that Michael Dottino has done in his Maximum Memory Mastery online course. And so uh, it's, it's been a wonderful, I look at the positive things and Salongo is certainly one of the positive people that I've encountered in my social interactions of Zoom that make these broadcasts all worthwhile. Because of what? If you get one plus one to a brain that has all the power that we wrote about 20 years ago, you can create your own miracles in your own life if you've got yourself in the right synergy. This is my Thursday 3 p.m. broadcast, uh, live with Tony. I'll be back with you on Saturday afternoon. Hope all is well. You have a good Friday. And uh, start to pay attention so which way is your gig going inside your thinking and how is that impacting your life? And just know that we've got people around us that can help us. And let's learn to reach out and use our support networks when we need them. Have a good afternoon. We'll see you on Saturday. <laughs>